to another DTTV with Sim. What we've got here is we're going to be looking at Geocam 3D today and using STL files from SolidWorks to cut on our router map. I'm looking here at a dome shape and the dome shape is quite deliberately too tall. The dome shape is 40 millimeters high and something that quite a few students may come across. Uh, the problem with that is that our longest series cutter on our router mill is 27 millimeters. So clearly this can't be done in one single pass. With that in mind, the first thing we need to do is to chop this into sections. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch on a plane that goes through the middle. I already know that it's 40 millimeters high, so what I'll do is I will create a post box shape at 20 millimeters. Green tick, features, extruded cut, and I'm going to cut through that in two directions to allow me then to end up with the top dome. And I'll save that. Uh, with that in mind, obviously I want the bottom part as well. So what I can do is I can actually go back into my extruded cut and edit my sketch. So I'm going to draw a large rectangle around there. And obviously now it sees the islands round the other way. So when I click rebuild, I get the bottom section. And I'm going to save that as a different file name. So having done that, you might have to do a whole series depending on how high the component part is that you're doing. At this stage, I will now save as, grab the server, save as, and I'm going to in here, choose STL file from the list that I have. When you do that, it then changes it into this effect pattern. So I've saved that. I'm now going to minimize that. At this stage, what we're going to do is we're going to look at Geocam 3D, and I'm going to open that up to the desktop, so it's this rather dodgy looking icon here. Geocam 3D is used by Boxwood, uh, which are the machines that we've got in our workshop. Um, the system itself, the software, isn't the most beautiful to look at in the world but it does do the job. When you're looking to open your file, you want to click on the browse icon and then you need to find the folder with your particular model in. STL files save as a, as a certificate trust list type and you can see they've got these unusual logos here. And we open that up. Now, in this view, we're now looking at uh, the model. The blue section refers to the bed. So the first thing we need to do is determine which direction we want to cut it from. And you can see by clicking on the different directions, it will cut it in different ways. So what I'm looking for is to get myself so that I've got the blue on the top and then yellow on the bottom. What I'm doing here is I'm holding down the left wheel of the mouse, which makes my life a little bit easier in terms of moving those around. You've also got a cut depth, so I can pull that down so it means that the cut will pull all the way down to the bottom of the height. Next. At this stage we pick an appropriate material. The actual size of the products are here. So if I wanted to make it exactly the right size, then I could. Uh, when you're asking wood to be cut, you normally want to give yourself about an extra 10 millimeters. So for good practice sake, what I'll do is I will now change these to 70 and 70. As you can see, the model sits inside and you can see a preview of how much wasted materials are gonna be. If you can cut down an amount of wasted material, that's good practice. On this next screen, the model, on this next screen, what we've got is we've got the resize. We don't want to resize it, we want to do it at 100%. Quite often when you do that, the preview disappears. But when we click on next, you can then see it. We have a work shift Z, which we need to pull down. Now this button can be tricky sometimes and won't work. Um, by the look of it, it's already set, set between zero and zero. The reason for that is because the height of the material that I've chosen 20 uh, millimeters is the same height as the model, so it's going to get rid of the whole lot. If the material was 21 millimeters, um, we could look at having it so that you had a one mil work shift, i.e., you leave a lump on the bottom um, or you remove all the material as we are here. As these are zeros and we know it's the right height, that's not an issue. We're going to look in our tool library now and we're going to choose the 6.35 radius. That is our long series cutter. 
Um, as standard, when we're doing most cuts, what we do is we use the same cutter twice. It means that you've got the same roughing tool as finishing tool. Whilst that may not give us the best finish in terms of what we're doing, um, what it does allow us to do is to ensure that the material uh, is removed quickly and we don't have to keep changing cutters. Okay, you can ignore the allowances. When you look at the footprint, you want to rough the entire material because if you don't, you end up with this exterior collar. The problem with that would be that the cutting head wouldn't be able to get down inside it. And when you see the setting up of the router mill, you'll understand what I mean by that. At this point, we're now looking at how to do the cut. Now, there's a variety of different options here. There's Rasta Profile, there's True Spiral, and Combination Milling are the main three that we'll use. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is going to use tr uh, True Spiral Milling because it's a very good way of giving you a smooth dome across the top of the surface and is probably the right thing to do for the other part of the dome. However, this will show you how sometimes if you don't pick the right option here, it won't work very well. If I click Compute, what the computer is doing is it's planning its cutting. If I click Simulate and then I press Play, what you'll notice is the cut then simulates its way around. The problem here is obviously the true spiral for the top section is fine, but as the cutter then comes down to the edge, the ball nose isn't capable in a spiral cut to smooth that up. So if you do this and you find that you've gone the wrong way, there's different options available to you. One would be going back to your section here and thinking about using a different cutter, but because of the shape, I know fully well that the spiral cut is not going to work. And that's our major issue here. So if I go for raster profile milling instead, click next and do a new compute. What it's doing now is doing a, another pass, which will then help it to cut it better than it was previously. So the beginning part is still the same as it roughs out the material, but now you'll notice instead of going around the spiral, it's going straight across, which is giving us a much smoother edge to the finish. Still not perfect. Um, issues will be with that are again the shape of the cut on the bottom. So if we had a flat edge, we'd be able to smooth that out. However, this is not going to be actually that rough in the final thing and would be the sort of thing that you'd be able to easily sand out. Once you're happy with this, um, one of the things you're looking for here is making sure that this purple colour isn't appearing anywhere here. That denotes that the actual cutter here has clashed, um, which means that the product won't actually manufacture. Um, providing there aren't any purple lines and you're happy with the quality of the shape, then simply click next and then you're going to save it as a Boxwood file. From there, you'll then take it through into the workshop, you'll open it up on one of the router mill machines. That will then go through some further processing and then actually do the data that the computer will use to actually uh, do the cut for you. Okay, that's been DTTV. Thank you.